What's up, good people of the world? It's the Big Heavy, and this is actually a video I wasn't even gonna make. I'm putting a dash cam in my 2021 F-150. A, it's 6.3 billion degrees right now in the lovely Carolinas. B, there's 100 dash cam videos on the 20, uh, the prior to 2021 model year Ford uh, F-150s, the Gen 13. And as these things seem to be going, as I'm learning, 95% of it's exactly the same. But there is like a 5% that was a little bit different. So I was just gonna throw that up in the video, but I figured I'd give you like a quick five minute overview of how I installed my dash cam. Hopefully it'll give you a little inspiration or something like that and help you out as, as you consider putting yours in. So to start out, and I'll put a link to my two-way radio install video, um, but it's, you probably don't even need that. Um, I start out by taking off this panel down here. You can see that up there, it's the panel that says platinum or you know whatever your, uh, your trim level is in your particular F-150 don't really need any tools, use your hands, just kind of, you can get your fingers up under the top, give it a gentle pull. You can see there's one, two, three, four, five, you know, six or seven or so clips. They come out pretty easily with some gentle, uh, gentle hand love. Um, the next piece that was a little trickier is removing the, uh, the A pillar up here. And you can see that white thing is the airbag that's in there. There's what it looks like if it's not removed. Um, the 20, uh, 20 and prior videos show that there's two nice little screw covers on the A-pillar handles. Let me show you what that looks like. So here's our actual A-pillar. Um, and instead of the 2021, there's this nice smooth panel. So looks super cool, um, but obviously it doesn't have those nice two little screw covers. What it does have is on the bottom, and this is the dash side, is this tiny little slot. And you can see um, I took a little bit of a bite out of that, trying to get that open. Um, I tried a little dental pick tool, tried a couple different tools. Ultimately what worked was my, uh, what I unofficially call the uh, the booger picker screwdriver down here, just a little tiny flat head, kind of got in there. You know, again, got a little, maybe too aggressive, but apparently these things are seven bucks. So if it ever bothered me, I could replace it. A, B, it's not the place I'd ever look unless I was jamming my head into the dash, which if I'm operating the vehicle and in that position, something much more horrible has gone wrong than a little bit of the jacking up of that trim piece. So. Pop that guy out. You got two 10 mil bolts, um, exactly the same as the prior generation. Removes exactly the same as the prior generation. You kind of grab the handle, give it a pull. Um, that unlatch the clips pretty easily. And then there's these two big old uh, tabs at the bottom. You kind of, you know, if this was installed, you sort of yank and then you pull up and it'll come right out pretty easily. And that's almost exactly the same as the previous gen. So I realized that was a quick overview, um, but watch the previous gen video if that doesn't make any sense. I remove this one connector from my tweeter just to get this guy out of the way and make life a little easier. And then you can see I've got my USB-C cable up there. Uh, you can kind of jam it behind the plastic. I didn't feel like going through the whole process of removing the headliner, but if you reach your fingers up in there, you can get it down just enough and be careful so you don't crease it, that you can slide the wire in and there's a little lip behind there that you can feel with your fingers. So I'd strongly advise you to just make sure you kind of get your wire over that hump so it's not gonna flip down on you. And then what's cool, and pardon my uh, gymnastics here, what's cool is we've already got these nice little factory clips for wiring. So you can see my USB cable in there. Um, I just popped in those clips and then kind of go up. And again, you can kind of get your fingers back here, get that cable in there pretty easily without having to remove the headliner. And what that does is it gets you behind this airbag. Um, you know, this guy's a side curtain airbag, so he's gonna come down, block any flying glass. If you're in an accident, save your butt. So you don't wanna take the easy way, um, which I thought about doing, but obviously didn't do for this exact reason. And the easy way would be pulling up this, uh, this weather stripping, um, you know, which again, you can see in my two-way install video, but you just pull this guy up and he nicely comes around, pro tip there. Don't take him all the way off or you'll have to get him exactly on there. Um, but, you know, do it the right way, basically, is, is what I'm trying to say, I guess, because that, that curtain airbag could save your life. So you get that cable in there, um, and you can basically, what I did was run it down here. Um, you can get behind this guy with, uh, with your finger. Um, you can remove the weather strip and make it a little easier on yourself and just kind of work that cable back there. Take them up here and do a little kind of up-down sawing motion or flossing motion and you'll ultimately get that cable right up there. You know, it essentially flows freely behind, uh, behind this trim piece, so it's super easy. 
And what I've got to power this guy instead of going to the fuse is this uh, rear master and my juvenile uh, side of my brain is attempting not to laugh. What I like about this guy, plugs into the ODB2, um, OBD, yeah. Sometimes I say ODB, you know, obviously that's for a old dirty bastard, baby give him his money. OBD is onboard diagnostics. Um, so it does not plug into the old dirty bastard port. It plugs into the onboard diagnostics port gives you power and what's cool about this guy um, if you put it in the open position it's gonna give power for five minutes and then turn off if you put it in this open position it'll keep supplying power even after you turn off the vehicle and it has a theoretically it'll uh, cut off if your battery goes below 11.6 um, volts so it should prevent you from burning out your battery and it should let you um, put parking mode on if your dash cam supports that in terms of my dash cam, since we're here, um, got this little Garmin guy. It is a Garmin 57, I believe. Uh, I didn't go with a 67W. Based on my research, the only difference is the 67W is a wide angle. I don't think I really need a wide angle. This guy does pretty good coverage um, in front of me so I can see who's coming and all that stuff. And I'm gonna run it for a few days. And if I don't like the coverage, it's easy enough to swap out to the 67W. It's essentially exactly the same thing, just with that wider angle. That's what I like about this Garmin uh, 57 and why I picked the, the newer Garmin units. Specifically, um, I had actually bought a Van True unit that was on sale. Kind of figured, hey, I should probably put in a dash cam anyway. Um, put that guy up, it was really a big unit. It had an inside cam. I don't really need to see myself. I unfortunately have to do that every morning when I look in the mirror and it's not pretty. Wanted something that was smaller that I could essentially hide behind the mirror that uh, you know, had a little better feature set for me. And the key feature that I like about this Garmin is it's got Wi-Fi. So theoretically, when I pull into my driveway at night, it should upload any incidents or any interesting footage up to the Wi-Fi and save it in some Garmin cloud somewhere. There's tons of reviews out there on the, the Garmin 57 and 67W. So if you're interested in that, Check those reviews out. Those, uh, you know, da the dash cam bros, generally it's bros, are much more knowledgeable than I am. So I'll put links to the Rear Master. They have those for mini USB and USB C. So just get the one that's relevant for your dash cam if you're into that. I'll put links to the Garmin dash cam if you want to check it out. And other than that, this is a pretty straightforward install. And hopefully, this quick video helped you figure out how to install in your own 2021. Thanks and stay cool, especially for those of us that are in like day 46 of 90 plus temperature, 90 plus humidity. Peace. Ever wonder why every talking head on YouTube asks you to hit the like and subscribe button at the end of their video? You are right, because we're living in a computer simulation and our benevolent robotic overlords get just a little bit of energy every time you hit that like. So do me, the rest of civilization, and our benevolent robotic overlords a favor. Match that subscribe, be kind to each other, keep living your simulated dreams.